that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. In other words, I know what I got for you. And sometimes our finite mind tries to understand God to the point that we've created religions and, and this I be uh, uh when I got saved in ninety nine, I think like within six months of church I was at, in six months, um the pastor was like, I want to make you a deacon, this and the other. For some reason that caused such an uproar because they was like, That's wrong. You gotta wait at least one year to do that. God ain't say do this and God ain't do that. You can't do that. And you know, I'm like, well, number one, I didn't see where there was a set time. It was pretty much up to choice because you know, he asked me to be a deacon from God, of course. But we get so set in our ways to where we try to actually understand God. God, I don't understand. And we spend 30 days, months, God, I don't understand. God, I don't understand. Instead of just standing and trusting God for what he's going to do, for what he already said to you in the beginning. Take a position and trust God. Israel decided not to take a position. Because I believe somewhere in Jeremiah before that, it says, look for the old path and walk therein. But the people said, we're not going to walk therein. They set their position. They chose, we're not going to do this, God. And you know what? God would rather you make the right choice, but if you choose the wrong choice, then you have to expect the consequences of your actions. So he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. To give you an expected end. I know what I'm thinking about you. I know the plan that I have for you. But in order for that plan to come to pass, I need you to trust me. God, I'm battling this addiction. I need you to trust me. God, I just want to open up my mouth. I can't stop. God, I, you got to trust me. you got to stand. Verse 12 says, Then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. What? And ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search me with all your heart. You can't go at this thing half heartedly. You gotta search God with all your heart. Who knows the heart better than God? Oh God, I love you. But your actions speak different when you leave this building. God, I I, I love you so much and I, Everyone sees me in church praising you, and they can turn on YouTube and see me shouting and this, that, and the other, and, and everything, God, I, but I love you, but, you know, uh, uh, Monday through Friday, they don't even know that I'm saved. You saved? You go to church? No one should ever be shocked by that. Because even if you never opened up your mouth to say I'm saved, even if you didn't wear a cross around your neck to say I'm saved, even if you didn't wear a Jesus t-shirt, that says that I'm saved, your lifestyle should speak louder than your voice. Amen. And verse 14 says, If you stand, I will be found of you, saith the Lord. I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place which I have caused you to be carried away. If you're just saying, God is saying, I will be found of you. I will be found of you. It may require some of you praying. It may require a little bit of fasting. It may require some seeking. It may require you to cut off some folks in your life. It may require you to turn off the phone. It may require you to get off Facebook. It may require you to get off the Internet. But God says, if you do these things, I will be found of you. Don't you realize that if you cut some things off, God is going to be so impressed by you cutting those things off because you're doing whatever it takes just so you can get in contact with God. I told a friend of mine uh, a couple weeks ago, I said, you got Facebook addiction, don't you? And she said, what? I said, because every time I go on Facebook, I see you posting like 10 things already. I'm leaving the house, Facebook. I'm at the store, Facebook. I'm going home, Facebook. There's a lot of traffic out here, Facebook. I got 12 things of groceries, Facebook. I said, you post all this stuff. So, and it so happened, Channel 6 did a thing on it, and I sent her the link. And she said, you know what? I think I'm addicted. 
But if you try these things that you know that's hindering you, that's actually separating you from God, that when I try to get in the presence of God, my phone rings and I just got the answer because curiosity, curiosity is killing the flesh. And it's cutting you off from actually getting into that time from God. Wow. And when I try to get uh, 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 into the presence of God, something good comes on TV that I just got to watch it. I don't got DVR, so I can't record it. I want to get in the presence of God, but then somebody calls me and says, hey, let's go. let's go work out. Let's go play some basketball. Let's go to the mall. Matter of fact, let's go witness. Amen. That's great. But if it's taking you away from God, because when is God getting his time? Amen. When is God getting Because that's the one thing that you got to ask yourself. If everything that I do throughout the day, how much time am I really giving to God? If you add it up, you give your job eight hours. Yeah. Mandatory. Because if you don't give it eight hours, either you got SMLA or something. That's the only way you're going to get a free paycheck. But you give your job eight hours. That's mandatory. You got to give them eight hours. Or I'm sorry, nine hours if you can include lunch. Right. Um, you got to give your kids a couple hours. If you're married, you got to give your husband or your wife a couple of hours. Amen. Wife wants more, y'all. <laughs> but I let y'all know that. Uh, they want more. Amen. That's it. <laughs> you got to give them a couple hours. And then sometimes you got to give yourself a couple hours to kind of basically wind down from the day. Yeah. And through all that day, those 12 hours, there's only 12 hours in a day, right? Dang. During those 12 hours in a day, how much time, well, 24 hours in a day, I'm sorry, 12, 8 of them pretty much just sleep. Yeah. So that's why I put it down to 12. <laughs> Out of that time, 16? Okay, 16. <laughs> 16. This brother's up a lot. <laughs> During that time frame, how much time are you actually setting aside for God? How much time are you actually setting aside for God? It got to the point where that I was so bogged down with things that I basically had to escape in the bathroom. And I mean literally be in the bathroom. And then the kids, where's dad at? Wife, he's in the bathroom. Oh, he's going to be in there for a minute. They think I'm doing something else. I have my Bible in there because I need to get some time. Because if they see me, if they know I'm in a room, that's not going to help. If they know I'm in the basement, I hear them coming down the steps. So it's like I got to get away. And it's those things that God really appreciates because you're pushing aside life just to get into an intimate relationship, just to be in his presence. You're taking a position. And you know what? I'm not going to let nothing separate me from my time from God. I'm taking a stand. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Some people ain't going to like it. Yeah. Family may not like it. Well, well, well you got to speak. I know I love you and everything, but I got to give God first. And if you put God first, man, they can't come back with nothing with that. <laughs> they can't come back because you're talking about God. But baby, I love you. God, though. God. <laughs> got to get with God, right? <laughs> said, when was the last time I actually got with God? Oh, you can't, can't come with it. No one can come against a defense with that. Yeah. Unless you just a fanatic.